<laughs> All right, so again, the first announcement was that we're recording. Um, then if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You can either um, at the end raise your hand. There's a function to, um, you know, just raise your hand virtually. Um, and then we can call on you, you can unmute yourself, you can uh, share your video or not and ask the question directly. Or if you're not comfortable doing that, you can also, um, you know, just type it in the chat and then we'll read it out for you. Um, and then if you want any updates on um, the Africa Committee or on basis in general or the project that we're presenting, there's um, a Facebook group that you can join and our social media manager is very active there shares a lot of recommendations and updates on what we're doing. Um, then you can email us for uh, signing up for our newsletter, which um, also our social media manager uh, sends out, not weekly, but whenever there's something important coming up. And then we have a website as well, which is specifically for the project for the um, yeah, initiative that we're starting with the lecture today, which is to set up a statue of Anton de Kom in Den Haag. So you see it on the um, slide, but we'll also send it in the chat later on, I think. Um, and yeah, if you go on that website, you'll see, um, you know, a description of what we're doing, uh, why we think it's important, um, the events that we're planning around it, and also ways that you can support us. So for example, we have a petition that we'd love for you guys to sign. Um, or if you have the means, we're also happy um, if you could do donate some, um, but we're currently still working on setting that up, um, you know, online and COVID times makes it a bit more difficult to set up all of these things, but uh, we're working on it. We hope it's going to happen soon. Um, and that's the quick announcements. Um, we'll have a really short introduction on why Anton de Com is relevant for us as a committee and for basis in general, for our um, study in general. Then Dr. Anna-Marike van der Remy is gonna give a really short introduction about statues and their significance and why this project is important. Then we'll turn to the main guest lecture and then we'll have uh, time for question and answers and we hope you'll enjoy it all. And yeah, so this is um, for anyone, because we know for today, uh, quite a few people are joining who are not necessarily in our bachelor um, or familiar with how our bachelor is set up, but we have these four pillars, which are uh, history, economics, um, politics, and then culture studies. And with those, we try to approach um, how we can understand international relations um, or even domestic um, situations. Um, and then we choose a focus, which is then like an area studies approach with the same four pillars. And um, the two committees that worked on setting up the lecture today are the Africa one, which is um, what I'm the president of, and then the Latin America one, who we hope some people are here today as well. They really helped us promote, um, but we're not sure if they were able to join. Um, and yeah, two topics or ways of thinking that were really important for us um, when we approach the, the area studies is uh, slavery and the transatlantic slave trade in Africa. I'm sure also in the other um, area studies, it's an important topic. Same goes for colonialism and then anti-colonial and post-colonial thought. And um, that's why we think it's so important for us to talk about um, Anton de Combe today, because um, most of us live in The Hague, um, most of us in um, international studies. Um, and he was uh, one really important thinker in this realm of thought for the Netherlands and especially in The Hague because he worked and lived here. And yeah, we're really excited to hear more about him. And with this, I'll hand over to Anne Marike to um, tell us a bit more about why this project is so important and why statues in general are important. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks, thanks, Emma, for uh, introducing me. Um, yeah, I'm really excited that um, it's finally the, the kickoff of this project. As you said, we've worked on this for uh, already a, a few months. Uh, but this really feels like a sort of a, a celebratory uh, beginning of um, the project becoming real and, um, and concrete. Um, so just very briefly, because I don't want to take too much time of the main speaker, of course, who uh, will tell us much more about uh, who Anton de Kom is. 
um, and why he matters for Dutch history. Uh, but just first briefly how we got to this project, because it was really a, a joint project with um, uh, the students from uh, the Africa track within international studies, as Emma explained. Um, and sort of the, the seed for uh, this project was planted when we had a group discussion about uh, World War II and the connection to decolonization. Um, so uh, I made a video actually, thanks, uh, if you can say that to the COVID uh, measures uh, last semester also, we had to make online uh, uh, videos. And I made the, these videos about memory sites of African history that you could find in The Hague. And I made a, a video about Anton de Kolm and the connection between decolonization um, and the fight against fascism in Europe. Uh, which is often overlooked, uh, which I think is a shame because I think if we uh, really emphasize that the fight against fascism in Europe uh, was linked to the then uh, continuing fight against imperialism uh, in Africa and in other parts of the world, but for our course uh, we mainly focused on Africa of course, um, this, this particular episode in history will become much more important and I think also more commemorated uh, in Europe. Um, so this was one of the, the things we discussed, uh, so seeing the fight against fascism and the fight against uh, imperialism as two sides of the, of the same coin. Um, and then I looked at uh, the places of commemoration of World War II that already existed in, uh, in Europe uh, and in, uh, in The Hague in particular. Um, and Emma, if you can switch to the, to the next slide. Uh, I don't know if, <laughs> if I can do that or... Yes, thanks. Um, so there, there are already quite a number of monuments for resistance fighters in The Hague, as you can uh, imagine. Uh, and most are um, yeah, around the Waalsdorper Vlakte, if people know what that is, and uh, around the Oranje Hotel, two uh, sites that are linked. You can see the, the orange hotel here depicted on the left on the slide, which is um, a prison where all the important resistance fighters in The Hague and also in the Netherlands uh, and members of um, political opposition, but also of parliament uh, were arrested and were kind of held hostage by uh, the German uh, occupation. Um, and they were um, shot uh, in the Waalstropper Vlakte, which is in the dunes near The Hague, between The Hague and uh, Wassenaar, um, whenever there were retaliations against uh, German occupation of the Netherlands. So there were kind of these, these very um, high uh, elite uh, hostages of the German um, Nazis. Uh, and one of the uh, most famous of the prisoners in this hotel, in this uh, orange hotel, as it uh, became known, was Anton de Kom, in fact. Uh, but this in particular uh, fact is uh, less well known. So this is also, again, one of the, the reasons why we started this uh, project. Um, George Maduro is uh, also someone from um, uh, the Netherlands or the, the larger part of the Netherlands, so from uh, Curaçao, who came uh, to the Netherlands just before the start of the war um, and joined in the resistance. Uh, we all know his, uh, his statue, hopefully, and Maduro Dam that was uh, erected in his uh, memory. Um, but this is really the only uh, one that we can that I can think of and that I found that really commemorates um, uh, those that came from overseas to fight for our freedom. So I think also for Anton de Kom, uh, there there is enough. Um, uh, yeah, there should be more uh, space for him in the Hague to commemorate him as well. Um, there is one street name uh, already. Um, in his uh, commemoration, which is uh, in Loosduine, uh, close to the dunes as well. Uh, that's also on the next slide, if, um, if you can move to the next slide, uh, Emma or, yeah, great. Uh, so the Anton de Kompstraat in, uh, in Loosduine. Um, but it's not actually near where he uh, lived. Um, so in terms of memory sites, um, this is of course, a, a, yeah, an in it's interesting because it's close to the dunes where most of these uh, atrocities by the, the German Nazis um, occurred, so where most of these hostages and these resistance fighters were killed. But it's not near to the place where um, we have memories of his actual life in The Hague already before the war and during the war, uh, which is in Bezuidenhout, uh, a neighborhood uh, close to uh, Central Station. 
Um, and uh, ironically speaking, um, his former house is in what we would now see as the East and West Indies neighborhood. It's not called as such, but it's, uh, it really is. Most of the street names in the area are uh, named after governor generals that served for the VOC and in the uh, VEC WIC in the, the uh, East and in the West Indies, uh, such as, for example, Johannes Kamphuis, uh, the street name, um, the street where Anton de Kom lived. He was the governor general of the Dutch East Indies in what is nowadays uh, Jakarta. Um, so there's a yeah, small irony, I think, uh, in that as well, that um, there is no space in this area uh, that commemorate Anton de Kom, and yet all the street names are still named after uh, colonial uh, figures. Uh, so this was also once we uh, came across this um, sort of um, more motivation for us to try to change something and our desire is mostly to uh, erect a statue or a commemorative a plaque uh, near his house and really in his street or at least in the neighborhood sort of combat this um, uh, this paradox uh, and to uh, go against just a colonial commemoration but also make space for the post-colonial um, um, figures and uh, and voices. Thank you, Anna Marieke, for your introduction. Um, I would now briefly like to introduce Carwan Fata Black, who is a professor at Leiden University, and uh, he's uh, specialized in the Dutch colonial history and uh, the transatlantic slave trade. So, uh, yeah, we thought he would be an excellent. A speaker for this uh, topic and we are really really grateful that uh, you're joining us today Carwan. thank you very much and um, the floor is yours well uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, organizing this um, uh, this this cooperation by uh, and students and, and uh, scholars and, and activists this idea to to really change something about um, uh, um, the city of The Hague and, and add commemoration for uh, for the Com, um, and so it's it's uh, it's a great honor to uh, to speak to you uh, today. Um, uh, last year, to, in 2020, Anton de Com was included into what we call the canon of Dutch history, um, and the canon of Dutch history was uh, first established on the initiative of the Dutch government in, in 2006. Uh, and it has been updated once in 2020 uh, since then. Yeah, okay, that's... Uh, <laughs> um, so this, this uh, conservative uh, concept of a canonized national history um, a, a gained uh, political backing um, in the early 2000s after this tumultuous rise in the Netherlands of populist um, uh, right-wing politics. Um, the concept of the canon was, however, not, uh, not very, uh, very new, right? Already in the 19th century, but also in the early modern period, um, uh, Dutch historians created the uh, book series and overviews summarizing these highs and lows of uh, Dutch history. Um, and much of what it is in the current day official canon will be familiar to, uh, uh, to those who are uh, familiar with the older, uh, uh, old, uh, these, these older overviews of, of Dutch national history. And in fact, Anton de Kom himself would also have been, um, uh, would be familiar with, with this um, uh, overview of history. And um, he uh, himself commented also on the canon of Dutch history in his 1934 book, We Slaves of Suriname, uh, when he talked about education in Suriname, and I'm going to, to quote from his uh, from his book. Um, and uh, for this quote, uh, I'm using a translation uh, to English that was made by Arnold Pomerans <clears throat> in the 1980s, but which has never been published. So that is uh, a pity, and I still hope that an English translation will be forthcoming. But um, well, many attempts have failed. But let's uh, put it that way. Um, okay, I'm going to cite from his book uh, how he criticizes this concept of a historical canon. One of the reverend brothers of the Tilburg order stood before the class and taught us about the acts of heroism, heroism of Piet Hein and de Ruiter, of Tromp and Everts and Evertsen and Blankert. We, the black, black children, at our desk in the back, the front, 
front row seats were reserved for European boys and girls, wrecked our brains trying to remember the dates of the reigns of the noble houses of Holland and Bavaria and Burgundy. We who were threatened with the cane if we dared to speak our own Saranam language with the, within the confines of the school had to show enthusiasm about the revolt of Claudius Civilis and the brave stand of William the Sign. So that is uh, Anton de Combe in his, in his 1934 book, very clear about what, uh, uh, how it felt like, what it meant to him to be taught this, this canon of Dutch history. So what are the ethics of including someone into the canon who saw so clearly this damaging effect of teaching canonized history and who was so cynical about the way in which history was taught in school, in the colony? Um, he criticized directly uh, and openly that the way in which history is taught contributes directly to this racialized inequality that was supporting the, um, uh, the, the colonial system. Um, so how do, we, how do we deal with, uh, with putting him in the canon? And I'll, I'll try to say a couple of things uh, about it. Um, most of my lecture today will be uh, uh, biographical. Um, but biography is not really the uh, sort of uh, methodology I'm, I'm very well acquainted um, uh, with, but I'll, 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 I'll ask some more sort of questions about his life, about the relevance of his life, and what it means to uh, monumentalize a life like this um, and uh, include it in, in such an institution as the canon of, uh, of Dutch history. Um, one of the paradoxes, for example, is that the inclusion in the canon has now occurred um, even before his uh, long-awaited um, uh, official restoration of honor, Eerherstel, has taken place. He was dishonorably ba banished from Suriname, and the government has not taken any uh, 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 made a formal uh, apology for that. Uh, for that. Um, of course, the, if, I, if I question uh, canonizing and monumentalizing a life like Anton de Combe, I should also be open about my own uh, uh, role in this uh, myself. I was one of the eight members who was a part of the committee of um, um, uh, the reevaluation, re evaluating the, the, the canon. And as a committee, we, we collectively and unanimously decided uh, to adopt the Com uh, among 40 other 49 other uh, moments and people in development that should be taught uh, to high school children. So, right, I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've been part of this uh, discussion for a, for a longer uh, period. Um, and a, um, but what we did not um, foresee when making that decision is how uh, much response that would uh, get and how uh, enthusiastic, uh, basically, people have been about the fact that he he was included in this uh, uh, in the in the canon. Um, for example, uh, that was not so surprising, but his book, reprints of his book, and the sales of the reprint of his book have have really skyrocketed in the last uh, last half year. Um, also, the interest in the yearly Anton de Combe lecture has uh, increased. Um, his likeness has been painted now uh, in several places. Uh, it's throughout Amsterdam and other places. People have made uh, paintings on the on the walls. Um, um, and now uh, the, the Black Archives, who is, uh, of course, um, uh, close uh, to, to the legacy of the Combe, has also started a essay competition um, asking people to write essays in the um, um, well, in, 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 in dealing with the uh, with the intellectual legacy uh, legacy of the com, and of course, then there is this initiative to uh, to also uh, begin to make a statue or a commemorative plaque in, in the Hague. So that is much more than we could have uh, uh, than we thought would happen when we decided to um, uh, to include him in the uh, in the canon. Um, and that also means that um, uh, questions have been raised about. Is it a good idea to have him uh, in the canon? Is that, uh, for example, uh, neutral? Right? Is it a? Is it? Is it? Um, uh, there is a lot of confusion about the canon of, of Dutch history. Uh, people saying, well, it should be sort of the outcome of a um, uh, scientific. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it should be uh, the the the. the um, um, 
a scientific conclusion what we put in that uh, in that canon, which is of course a, a misunderstanding about what history is and what even a canonized version of that history is. Um, but specifically with the comics, it's, it's quite clear that this cannot be um, that having him in the canon is not is not a, a neutral affair, um, and that how we interpret him uh, and his life is um, uh, something that that uh, invites uh, also to take uh, to take position um, and it is also uh, not neutral because the legacy of the com has been uh, appropriated by many different political movements over the years and so the the debate of how we position ourselves vis-a-vis -vis the com how we um, uh, position ourselves in this um, uh, in, um, position ourselves in, 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 this, in this half a century long um, history of, of appropriation of that uh, of the com is I think uh, important because what has happened in the last I think 50 years or so is that various political movements have claimed Anton de Com to be sort of the forebear of his of their uh, politics. Um, the military dictatorship of uh, Bouterse has um, uh, laid claim to the legacy of the com, monumentalized the com, famously uh, renamed the only university in Suriname after, after him, putting his likeness on um, uh, the uh, bills that, that were issued, uh, the money that was issued in the, um, um, uh, in the dictatorship period in the 19, 1980s. Right, so this is not a, um, a, a neutral figure and we have to deal with, with the appropriation as well. Also because a part of his family, uh, he had five children and, 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 and their, they, but also their, uh, their children again, um, have been quite opposed to the, uh, uh, the, the, the political appropriation of his, uh, of his legacy. Um, and uh, the, the main uh, biographers, the two, uh, the two biographers of, of the Com, um, painted a picture of him mainly as a family man and a, a f uh, someone who wanted to contribute to uh, literature and, and highlight his, his ambitions, literary ambitions, rather than his, uh, than his political activity. All right, so there is, um, um, there is a lot of discussion about someone, someone like the comet that has been going on for a while. And, and if, we, um, if we do something around him, if we try to make a monument or a plaque or, or uh, include him in a canon, I think we should, should note um, uh, the, the various ways in which his life has been interpreted. Um, but that's no reason, I think, to, to shy away from, from, from attempting uh, that. Um, and I think the, the, the reason, the main reason to have him uh, canonized, to memorize him, uh, to have him so um, uh, uh, explicitly in uh, 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 memorized as a, um, as a figure in, in, for example, The Hague, is I think his anti-colonial and anti-racist anti uh, critique of the Dutch empire uh, and, of, uh, and of inequality. inequality. Uh, and he represents an intellectual tradition that was uh, absent from the canon of Dutch history, but we have moved on and these issues of anti-racism and anti-colonialism should be part and parcel of what we understand as the development of, of Dutch history and uh, therefore he has, a, he has a place in that. Okay, but still, before going to all these complicated discussions about legacy and um, um, uh, and interpretation. Maybe it's good to say something about sort of the formative, uh, formative life, uh, the formative years of Anton de Kom's life. He was born in, in 1898. Um, and so he, as a child, uh, lived um, and, and, and came of age in the 1910s and 1920s when he lived in Cerna. And um, I think his life story is a story that is about what he personally did, but also very much the story of the time and place in which he, uh, in which he lived. Um, and as in all colonial societies, the colonial state and capitalist enterprise are dominant factors in, um, uh, in, his, in his early life, in the education system that he went through, that I said something about, but also uh, in the way his, his caretakers, his parents, uh, uh, try to make a, a 
lacking. Um, and it also shapes very much the, the first steps, his first steps in a, in a professional, uh, professional career. Um, the state, the colonial state, enforced uh, ethnic divisions um, based on racialized perceptions of human diversity. Um, slavery had been abolished for about half a century um, when the com was coming of age. Um, and uh, Suriname had seen the influx of all kinds of new uh, migrants, but also of um, uh, economic reorientation um, away from plantation agriculture into other, into other um, areas. Um, the Com himself and his family, um, the Com was born in the, in the Ponte Verstraat in Paramaribo. Paramaribo is the capital of, uh, of Suriname. It's the only larger uh, city. Um, but the Ponte Werfstraat is a bit outside of the center of the city. The Ponte Werfstraat is a, is a dusty street and runs through a neighborhood called Freeman Grom, Freeman's Land. Um, and in, in the book, uh, We Slaves of Suriname, that, that uh, the com has written, um, he speaks about uh, this, uh, the house where he was born. Um, and he speaks about the house where he was born as his father's house because his mother had passed away by the time that he was writing his book. That is, um, I think, a bit uh, uh, questionable. Interesting about the family of the Com, and, and, and especially his mother, is that along the matrilineal line, his mother and his grandmother, um, they had lived in Freeman Grom since the 1840s. So for 60 years before the Com was born, they had lived in freedom in, uh, uh, in that neighborhood, in that street, and had built a uh, independent, independent life there. The Com's grandmother was freed from slavery uh, more than 20 years before the formal abolition of slavery. She was freed in 1841 together with several of her uh, children. And uh, his grandmother had been purchased by a free woman of color with the intent of freeing her, right? So she had purchased someone with the intention of uh, freeing them. So here is a history of self-emancipation by uh, uh, the uh, uh, slaves and former slaves of Suriname before the abolition, uh, before the abolition of slavery. Um, and so grandmother settled in the Ponte Verstraat, where also the Combs mother was, uh, was born uh, in freedom. Um, and so when the Com grows up, he knows people around him who have found their own way out of, uh, uh, out of slavery. So his uncles and his aunts have seen this, um, uh, this trajectory rather than um, uh, enslavement and later being uh, uh, freed by the colonial government. On his father's side, Enslavement is even, is even closer. His father, Adolf de Com, had been born on a plantation in slavery. Um, his mother was regarded as slave. And so when, when uh, young uh, Adolf de Com was born, um, he, was, um, uh, he was born into, uh, into slavery at, at birth or made into a slave at birth. Um, and so in this way, um, de Com's parents on both sides um, represent part of that afro surinamese urban afro surinamese uh, population. Some who had been manumitted during slavery and who had established themselves in the town already for generations, and those who were formally emancipated at abolition in 1863. And so slavery and uh, uh, abolition are recent history. And the Com uh, speaks about those history as um, uh, in, in, in the book, um, uh, as told, or he, he says, I, when I was young, I heard the stories of my grandmother while she was sitting on, or while I was sitting on the porch of the house in the Ponte Verstraat. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure who he means when he says grandmother, and uh, it, it might be that we should read that sentence, not literally, but take it to mean that slavery was living memory for the older generation when he was, uh, was, when he was growing up. Um, so if we take a step back from the personal biography of his family and, and look at Suriname society at the time, um, we can see that, that the Com came from a very typical uh, background. 
Those who had found a way out of slavery before abolition numbered about 14,000 um, in, in 1863, while 34,000 uh, were freed at the abolition of slavery in 1863. Um, at abolition, however, the colonial state had been bent on preserving uh, plantation agriculture, uh, both through a uniquely long period of what they called state supervision that forced all the former uh, uh, field slaves to make contracts with plantations and to continue working in plantation agriculture, um, while meanwhile also um, uh, bringing um, uh, migrants to replace the former slaves. And so the colonial state imposed or created these kind of ethnic uh, divisions uh, along, um, uh, and, and well, not because, but the colonial state imposed ethnic divisions um, uh, along lines of different economic activities. And here, I think it's uh, interesting to see how, how close the history of the Kong himself is to this. Um, the British Indian migrants uh, were, were forced to work in agriculture, um, but were not allowed, for example, to undertake other activities, such as uh, um, uh, uh, mining or working in the uh, living in the interior. And here, um, uh, Anton de Kom's father, Adolf de Kom, was one of those who, Growing up, took on uh, took on mining and went uh, went um, uh, went gold uh, gold mining. So, uh, Anton de Crom, born late nineteenth century, last years of the nineteenth century, he is extremely bright. He excels in school, and he is sent to live with his aunt closer to the center of town, and he goes to school there. Um, and there he is confronted. Of course, because of uh, going to a good school, he is confronted by a racialized uh, treatment by the teachers that I mentioned before. Um, and uh, once graduated, this, of course, got uh, stronger. He tried to build a career as a clerk in a colonial enterprise. Um, and he uh, is then um, uh, uh, refused to rise through the ranks of that organization explicitly because of the color of his skin. The company where he works allows um, uh, clerks to work up to a certain level, but they cannot, uh, they cannot go higher if they have uh, recent slave ancestry. Um, then the Com uh, moves, tries his luck abroad, as so many others have done. Uh, new industries were springing up, and he, he goes to uh, Curaçao, he goes to Haiti. Um, and uh, in, in all these places, he doesn't stay very long um, before he moves to the Netherlands. And in the Netherlands, he joins the cavalry, um, but he also takes part in, 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 in social life. He joins an athletics, athletics club. And of course, he is also confronted by uh, this kind of racism, colonial ra uh, 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 racism in these, um, uh, in these organizations. Uh, there's a story of him fighting um, uh, uh, fighting with uh, uh, the people who make racist remarks uh, at the athletics, uh, athletics club. Anyway, um, more importantly, I think, is an, an in intellectual engagement that, that begins in the, uh, in the 1920s, during these years. Um, and the Com travels around the Netherlands um, and he meets with Indonesian nationalist students um, and he gave uh, lectures throughout uh, the country. Um, and he begins to publish as well. He published regularly in, in communist press of his time. Um, and it's clear that this, this outspoken anti-imperialism of, uh, of this movement, as well as the, the clear position that they take on, uh, on questions of race are um, um, reasons for him to, 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 to be attracted to this, uh, to this movement. And, and the movement also projects a, a clear road towards a future beyond poverty, beyond exploitation, uh, and, and beyond colonial inequality. Um, and, and, and this, um, uh, the Com was absolutely not the only uh, a person of Suriname's descent to be part of that movement. And famously, and maybe you've, you've, you've heard about him, um, uh, Otto Hausbaut, um, also from Suriname, is one of the founders of the Communist Party of the United States. Um, and the Com was also in contact with, uh, with uh, Hausbaut um, and published uh, articles in, in the American um, uh, in, in the American paper run by, uh, by Huisbaut. Uh, the paper was called The Negro Worker, uh, and the article by the Com is uh, Starvation and Poverty in Dutch, uh, Dutch Cayenne. Um, 
So again, without wanting to, to emphasize uh, uh, too much of his personal life, I think we cannot escape the fact that the, the personal and the political intersected in important ways during his life. In 1932, um, the Comte's mother, mother falls ill uh, and the Comte decides that he wants to go back to Suriname uh, and he wants to uh, take his family to visit, uh, to visit the, um, uh, his mother and his children's uh, grandmother. Um, but Suriname had gone through uh, quite bad economic downturn, um, unemployment rates were high, uh, protests had turned uh, violent, and the colonial government was very worried about uh, new escalations. And in this climate, in this political climate, um, the, uh, 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 the, the Dutch intelligence service sends a message warning the colonial authorities about the arrival of the COM in, in Suriname. And it's it's an interesting it's an interesting letter that they uh, they sent, um, and they they list sort of what what the com is like and what he has been uh, uh, what he has been up to. Um, that that has some some some. It, it's it's a very short paragraph, but it it, it has a lot of interesting information. Uh, so the letter says that he is a propagandist for the League Against Imperialism, and that he is part uh, uh, an activist for what's called the International Red Aid. Um, uh, and he is also mentioned to uh, speak out in the uh, what's known as the Scottsbury uh, Sc uh, Scottsboro Boys case. Um, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that case uh, later, but it's an important rallying point for anti-racist uh, and, uh, and, and communist activists in the United States, but also uh, also abroad in that period. Uh, but he's also spoken out against the colonial exhibition in, um, uh, in, in, in Scheveningen and the intelligence agency, agency states that it, it is to be expected that he will undertake actions against the public order and for communism in Paramaribo. Right, so in after these, these uh, riots of the unemployed, uh, the Com arrives and a letter is sent before he can arrive Telling, uh, 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 telling the colonial government that, that a, a communist uh, agitator will, uh, will come to the colony uh, soon. Um, and so his, um, uh, the colonial government fears his arrival so much that they turn the arrival in, into this great uh, spectacle with sending the security forces out to meet him when the ship arrives. And that you can imagine that in a colony where not so much, especially in, in the city, not so much is going on. Uh, such an event is, um, uh, uh, creates a lot of, um, uh, a, 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 a lot of uh, noise. Um, the Com is then placed under very strict supervision and is, is forbidden to go to visit uh, plantations or he, his, his movements are, are strongly restricted. Um, but the, the agitation around his arrival creates this atmosphere of, of tension, but also excitement uh, around him. Um, and, and some uh, in the colony um, regard him as a messiah-like figure who can hear their problems and uh, who can help them um, uh, 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 fight, uh, fight the oppression and uh, discrimination. Um, so the Com is unable to, to really go anywhere and so he sets up an office. Um, or his mother has, has uh, passed away when they were en route, um, so his father is, is living in the Pontewerfstraat house um, and the Com decides to open an office in the house in the Pontewerfstraat to receive people uh, to tell him about their lives and to tell them uh, about the complaints they have. And he, he, he says that he is he, he, he writes these endless um, uh, testimonies uh, uh, about uh, what has been going on. Um, I, just on a side note, I don't know where those uh, testimonies uh, are. So after his arrest, stuff is taken from his house and, and I don't know if anybody has ever really looked in the Ministry of the Colonies or, or elsewhere to find those papers. I don't, I, I think they have been destroyed, but it would be great if they could be found. Anyway, that was a side note for historians in the book. Um, so the Com um, uh, uh, gets all these people to his house and he uh, writes down what their uh, complaints are and he wants to organize public protests to voice uh, uh, the, the, the complaints that he has heard. Uh, but the, the protest is not allowed by the authorities. And then the Com says, well, if, if they're not allowed to protest, I'll just organize a big meeting to discuss these things 
in the backyard of my father because it's their private land. Um, uh, the, the police cannot uh, uh, cannot stop me. Um, and indeed, thousands and thousands of people, the estimates are that 4,000 people came to, to this uh, meeting, uh, assemble in the street. Um, and the police then says to the com, uh, well, maybe you should uh, go to the uh, police station um, to ask permission to hold a demonstration. And so the com does this and did not realize that this was a trap. And so the moment he arrives at the uh, police station, he is, uh, he is arrested. Um, but this, this movement around the com had grown tremendously um, and it, it included people from across different ethnic groups and also so not only the different migrant uh, populations and Afro uh, Surinamese slave descendants but also the indigenous and also uh, Maroons who lived in the in the interior and such a broad alliance um, such a broad movement is a real threat to colonial power in Suriname. Um, the Com has later uh, said that uh, some of the Maroons were also willing to supply him with weapons if he needed them, uh, but that he refused. So um, the Com is, uh, is arrested, he's um, uh, held in Fort Zelandia without charge, and um, uh, the, the position of the colonial officials was, was one of worry, but also one of, of anticipation. So there was an eagerness in the colonial leadership to change this movement, which was a massive and peaceful protest. And it seems that they are looking for ways to create um, uh, uh, or to, to, to change it into a conflict that they understand, uh, which is a military uh, violence, uh, violent conflict. Um, and so another trap is, uh, is set and the rumor is spread that the com was going to be released on Tuesday, February 7, 1933. Um, and then indeed, because they think, well, he will be freed now, all of these people uh, turn out into Paramaribo, thousands of thousands of people. Uh, but it was not true that uh, they were going to free him. Um, instead, fire is opened on people waiting outside the courthouse. Um, and what happens uh, uh, next is, is, is known as uh, Bloody Tuesday. So uh, soldiers fire three uh, volleys at the crowd um, and uh, the two people are killed, uh, 23 are wounded. We have um, pictures of this event actually um, in the uh, Rijksmuseum uh, archive. Um, anyway. Um, uh, so, so this, the 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 uh, the com is not um, uh, prosecuted. So, so they don't um, um, they don't continue to begin a trial against him. Instead, they banish him from Suriname and quickly send him to the Netherlands. Um, so, with that ends sort of this 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 brief period that he was back in uh, in Suriname. Um, now, the com basically has, has all the ingredients of what will become this book, uh, We Slaves of Suriname. He's unable to uh, work after he has been associated with a violent uprising. Um, and he uh, focuses on finishing uh, a book that he had already begun to write uh, years earlier, already in the late uh, 20s. Uh, he, he had begun on this idea of, of writing an anti-colonial history of, uh, of Suriname. Um, and now with, with these uh, fresh memories and insights, he, he begins uh, writing that book. And that book, I have a, one of the new copies here. There are many different uh, editions. Um, the book really bears that imprint of, of his early life in Suriname. Um, it also really bears that mark of his friendships with anti-colonial students from Indonesia. And he uses that word Indonesia uh, very explicitly uh, uh, in, uh, in his book. Um, it also shows his engagement with the Dutch and international uh, communist uh, communist movement, um, and his experience as as a leader of, of this short lived uh, movement in Suriname. Um, but it also bears the imprint, I would say, of of censorship um, and self censorship. For example, one day uh, the com the com's uh, house is uh, visited by the police. Uh, searching for the manuscript of the book. They dig up his garden to find it. 
Um, and um, uh, 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 there is a line in the, in the original edition that makes clear that he um, uh, changed some things about the text to prevent the book from being uh, banned by the, uh, by the censors. Um, and well, how you can see that, that the book has been censored somewhat is that uh, he does not mention um, uh, independence, Surinamese independence explicitly in the, uh, in the text even though everything around it makes clear that this is, uh, this is the, the, the direction in which this is going. Um, the book is quickly, uh, is, is published in, uh, in 1934 and is then quickly translated into German by uh, Augusta de Witt uh, and published with the help of publishers in Moscow and Zurich. Um, um, and in the, in the Third Reich, um, uh, uh, the book actually ends up on the list of, of banned books um, under, the, uh, under the Nazis. Um, I'm, I'm not so sure if you're, if you're familiar with the, with the book, um, but I think it's, um, well, one of the reasons that it has become this, this, this classic work is that it's so um, accessible. It opens with this uh, passage about sort of the natural, natural beauty of Suriname and then contrasts that with this lack of, of humanity in, in the colony. Um, and you can, uh, it, it, it is an accessible story about a land that he says is so, is so beautiful, but then upset by, these, uh, by, the, by the effects of, of colonialism. Um, he takes sort of this long history of Suriname and uh, discusses how it was uh, conquered uh, by Europeans and abused by uh, colonizers, uh, goes into the lives of the enslaved men and, and women, um, and talks about the, the horrors of the uh, transatlantic slave trade, which was uh, not, not done so explicitly in, uh, in the Netherlands uh, at the time at all. I think this is one of the few books you would find from that period that, that uh, discusses the, uh, the transatlantic slave trade and, uh, and its legacy. So uh, following those, those first uh, sort of um, early history chapters, um, he um, uh, uh, moves to what he calls the period of freedom, which is a cynical cynical remark about what freedom means and uh, talks about sort of the plight of contract workers from, from Asia and the continuation of um, uh, colonial violence, of uh, exclusion um, uh, and an exploitation here. Um, and in that, just like he had seen in the movement that built up around him, he, he bridges with this narrative that he creates, he bridges this ethnic divide um, between these different groups in the colony that had been created by the colonial state and that had been supported by, by race science. Um, and I think that is uh, one, of the, uh, one of the lasting legacies of that, uh, of that book, of not being, uh, not re uh, trying not to re reproduce the, the ethnic divisions that have been, uh, that have been created, but, but show that there is a, common, um, uh, a commonality uh, and a common interest in, uh, in fighting against uh, colonialism. Um, it also calls on white working class uh, in, in Europe to understand what is, uh, what is going on in, uh, in the colonial world and how it should be an alliance uh, there. Um, so after, uh, after doing that, he makes uh, an analysis of what is going wrong at that moment with the different industries and how they are making mistakes in, in, in economic, uh, colonial economic policy, and then closing off with an account of his personal experience during that brief return from uh, 1932 to 1933. Um, so this, his experience in Suriname and his banishment and, and his inability to, to continue to build a life for himself uh, and for his family um, must have uh, weighed really heavily on him. Uh, before the outbreak of the Second World War, he, he suffers from uh, anxiety, um, and is admitted uh, into a care facility for a mental, uh, uh, mental health. Um, the outbreak of the Second World War and the occupation of the Netherlands does not mean that he ends his uh, political activity. 
Um, he writes um, for illegal newspapers. Somewhat confusingly, he writes for two papers that are, that are called The Spark, the um, um, uh, one of the Communist Party, one of the International Socialist Movement. Um, and being involved in this will, uh, will cost him uh, his, uh, his life. He's arrested in The Hague in August 1944. His house is searched. Uh, they take a radio and his, uh, his writings. And he's then moved, as uh, was said in the introduction, to the, uh, the, the, the prison in Scheveningen, then to Camp, uh, Camp Fucht, and later to the uh, concentration camp Neuengammen. And, and during the move, um, uh, from that concentration camp to a satellite camp near uh, called uh, San Bostel, um, uh, he dies um, in April 1945, not long before the war in, in Europe, uh, the war in Europe uh, ends. Um, the, the legacy and the memory of the Kong is, uh, was greatly disrupted by the Second World War. But Suriname students in Leiden rediscover him um, uh, when they're searching through the university library um, and dis discover the book and they make um, uh, illegal <laughs> and they make uh, uh, reprints of the, of, the, of the book. And soon because of this, this new uh, attention uh, to him and, and people starting reading uh, the book, it, it, it's clear that this is um, uh, uh, an, an interesting work that speaks to um, sort of beginnings of, of Surinamese nationalism, as well as anti-colonial uh, and anti-racist uh, activism. Um, and this is, I think, also how uh, in the Canon van Nederland we um, uh, uh, reference the Kong, right? The subheading for the entry in the Canon is fighting racism and colonialism. Um, and of course, um, many aspects of his life are not uh, covered by this. But I think it is um, um, that these are the core, uh, the core ones. Um, that doesn't uh, that does not mean that there is no uh, opposition or uh, 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 voices countering what the Com was doing. Uh, interesting uh, and, and something that I really would like to mention is um, uh, Louis Doodle here, who was a leader of the workers' movement before. Uh, the Com arrived and still was a, a leader of that movement after the Com uh, after the Com had had left. Uh, Doodle was not convinced that the confrontational method of the Com was very effective, um, and Doodle himself also becomes a victim of colonial power a few years after uh, after the Com. Uh, the, uh, Doodle was leading opposition to the colonial government, um, um, but when he was doing this and he visits the um, uh, the governor um, uh, to voice the opposition in a, in a way, I think, similar to what the Com had been doing. Um, he is uh, forcibly admitted to a mental institution for, as they say, for observation. Uh, but he did not leave that institution for uh, 43 years uh, until a few days before his death in uh, 1980. Um, Cutting short the, uh, um, the, the 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 life and work of a um, um, uh, an activist who had been involved in um, um, in, in, in politics from a, um, uh, um, uh, from uh, long before for the Com. However, um, and whatever sort of the differences between a Doodle and, and the Com, I think they both deserve to be recognized as, as voices against colonial oppression um, uh, uh, under, under which Suriname has uh, suffered, and also as different approaches to the, to the fight against, uh, uh, against it. Um, other, uh, other people have also said that the Com had actually um, very little impact on uh, the development of Surinamese political parties, on the development of Surinamese nationalism, uh, or of the uh, labor movement. Um, and it, I think it's certainly true that, that no lasting organization has been left after his activities. Um, still, I think these are disclaimers that, that are worth uh, mentioning, um, but don't take away uh, um, uh, the, the, the uh, importance of, of uh, getting to know his work and his legacy and the context in which he, um, uh, in which he lived. Um, 
And so if we want to uh, have this, this project of uh, developing a, a monument, um, I think it's important to know that this would not be the first monument. There are several um, in, in Suriname. Um, there is a there is a bust. Uh, I think there are two in, in Suriname. There is a signed uh, plaque uh, near to the, the house where he was born. Um, and of course, in the Netherlands, we have uh, the, the famous uh, uh, and often uh, criticized monument on uh, the, the Anton de Kom Square in Amsterdam Zuid Oost. Um, but I think, given the uh, the activities that he undertook, it is it is really only fitting to have a place in in the Hague that explicitly uh, commemorates his history, uh, but that should I think also very much be um, um, a project that continues in the uh, spirit of the Com that was breaching. Um, uh, ethnic uh, differences among the uh, uh, colonized populations, but also very much uh, had had um, Afro-Surinamese leadership at its uh, uh, at its uh, heart. Um, so, with that, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that there are, are many questions, but I would uh, I'd like to leave you with that. Thank you so much. Um... That was really wonderful to hear. Um, I think, yeah, there's so many um, points where we can start asking questions and we already got to in the chat. Um, I don't know if you are, if you would like to ask them personally or if we should just read them out for you. Um, I think I will read out the first one. Um, and then the rest, if you have a question, you can also raise your hand. There's this um, button um, in participants and you can say that you would like to ask a question then you can unmute yourself and ask. So the first question by Ethan Mark is, Dr. Fata Black mentions that efforts to produce an English translation have failed. Can you tell us more about this? And then in brackets, um, it appears that an English version appeared or was meant to appear from Atlas Contact Press in 2016 with yourself listed as uh, co-editor, but it doesn't appear to be available anywhere. A big shame. <laughs> yes, um, this is a long, long history, but it starts in the 80s. Um, when the family understands, well, we, we would really like to have a translation. Uh, a Spanish translation was made on Cuba um, that was uh, published without the consent of the family. Um, several Dutch reprints were made um, uh, as well, and the family has objected to, to one of them. Um, and so when the idea of this English translation came, about uh, some family members were opposed to the idea and there has been a lot of um, discussion there. Mm, um, of course, the rights to the book have no, uh, are, are uh, no longer uh, managed by the family since it's uh, more than 75 years after the death of the author. Um, so there's no copyright anymore. Um, um, but the the translation that was made in the 80s there have been several attempts to publish it and one of them was uh, I've, I've done two of them uh, but every time the last time that's why it's in all these databases online uh, was when i was literally just just correcting the proofs i had made an index and done everything and i, mean, I was i was looking at the, <laughs> at the print proofs um when uh, when the family asserted their uh, their rights um, uh, again uh, even though we had the the, the, uh, the heirs of the of the translator with us and etc etc but no it was a painful uh, uh, time consuming uh, thing uh, but the thing is just somebody can just make a translation it's not that much work I've given up a bit but um, uh, uh, yeah just um, it it it, uh, it, sh it should be done it can be done it can be done by different people for different purposes as well. So I don't think there should be, um, uh, um, there's no, no need to wait for someone else or whatever, just, yeah, go ahead and do it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a pity, I have, I have it's, it's on my hard drive. I have the whole thing, yeah, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous, but uh, yeah. Um, I could just uh, WikiLeaks it somewhere, but uh, yeah, never mind. Um, okay. 
that I think was a very elaborate answer and <laughs> helpful to understand. <laughs> um, we have another one and uh, it's related to the one above, they say. Um, would you argue that the com is a contemporary of Fanon? Um, and also a second one, um, why do you think he's not as well known? Um, and maybe has that changed? Yeah, I think, uh, yes, he's, he's, a, he's a, I would say, um, a contemporary of, of, of many of, of the, the Caribbean uh, authors of, of, of his, uh, his day, C.L.R. James, um, 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 and um, Eric Williams, and these, these authors. He um, is aware of, of these other authors. Um, he, he reads a lot. Um, one of the first references he makes is to the, a book by Madalena Pass about the Scottsbury Bo Scottsboro Boys. So there, yes, there is a lot uh, there, um, uh, but he's not well known because of the language barrier. Um, and I think that's that's the problem. The fact that there's no translation um, and that the Dutch Caribbean are a bit um, uh, insulated from, uh, from the others. So a French translation would be, uh, would be good as well. As a, a direct response to this, David McKay says in the chat, I'm doing a new translation for Polity Press, which has purchased the rights to the Atlas Contact Introductions. The book is not yet in the public domain in the US, but it is in the UK and Europe. So without a question, but <laughs> just to convey to you what is being said in the chat. Oh, OK, sorry, I, can, I can't see the, the chat. Oh, Polity is doing it. OK, good, great. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, never mind. It is a long story. Yeah. Um, I don't see anyone else um, who has questions. I don't know um, if you could um, either type your questions in the chat. That would be wonderful. Or um, raise your hand and then uh, you can unmute yourself or we can ask you to unmute yourself. And if there's a problem because we're recording, I can also stop the recording. Um, or pause it and then continue after. That should not be the issue if you have any questions. Um, but while we're waiting for these questions, um, could you elaborate a little bit more about um, what other concerns you had about um, putting Anton de Combe in the um, curriculum or in the canon? Um, just uh, for us to get an insight or more of an insight into the discussions you already mentioned, the um, uh, issue of framing him in a certain way. Um, maybe there was uh, something else. And then after that, we already have a, a hand up. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I cannot discuss the discussion, the, what we had, what we said within the, the uh, Canon evaluation, re-evaluation committee, uh, but this was, let's say that it was not something that we had to think long and hard about this was this was one of the more easy uh, uh the, the, the easier sort of choices that we made um so yeah that that uh, but but i i'm 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 really um happy about the kind of uh, response societal response and 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 from education uh from teachers as well who we were really really uh very happy to have sort of this um uh, something concrete to to teach these issues of, of racism and, um, and, and uh, colonialism so thank you uh, yeah um of course we didn't expect you to share too much about uh, the meetings <laughs> um ethan mark would you um like me to pause the recording or um is it fine uh, it's fine uh, all right <laughs> so hi everybody hi uh dr fata black or my colleague uh, carwan um, thank you very much for this uh, very enlightening uh, presentation. I'm really happy to hear about the, the activism in The Hague, too. Um, I'm also a, a, a lecturer at, at Leiden. Some of you may be familiar with me. Um, I had a question. Actually, uh, Fanon came up just now in a question, but I was wondering about Du Bois and if you had any comment about that, because he, he it's kind of almost uh, you know, remarkable that, that Du Bois' great work, The Black Reconstruction, came out in 35, right? so one year after. Um, was there, do, do we know about, uh, I guess there were no, there were no uh, contacts between them, but were there, were there, do we know about influencing? Uh, probably not. 
um, the calm influencing Du Bois, I guess, but perhaps in the other direction. Ah, um, I, I don't know, but he, he must be, he must have been aware. I mean, he was really um, open and interested to, to this broader sort of Afro-Atlantic diasporic uh, 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 community or community are just uh, intellectuals and uh, uh, reading. Um, so uh, yeah, um, I, I, I can't imagine that there was, um, yeah. But uh, no, I, 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 um, I, I wouldn't know the concrete sort of evidence of that. Um, we got another uh, question in the chat and it is, can you make a comparison between Max Havelar and Vaislav and Suriname? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so both of them are in the canon. Uh, Max Havelar was, was already much earlier. Uh, it was put in there when it was, um, uh, when, when the canon was uh, um, uh, conceptualized. Um, and I think there is a very big difference in the positioning of the authors. Um, with with Vaislava not being explicitly in support of independence of Suriname because he cannot and is not allowed to say it um, uh, by the censor, um, and there are there might be some comparisons in in how they criticize the colonial business, um, but in style and in content i think they're very very different different books and uh, max Havelar is clearly also um, um, um or multiple is interested in in preserving colonialism um which is not something that that the comp seems to have been very uh, very interested in so yeah that's um, there's a difference uh, there yeah Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll get a water in a minute. Um, Diverche, do you want to, um, do you want me to stop the recording? Um, if not, just go for it. Okay. No, it's fine. Um, I have a question as well, because I am Dutch and I had the Dutch high school experience, but why do you think it took so long relatively before a Suriname author or any other Caribbean author was included in the canon? Um. Yeah, I, I that um, uh, racism. I don't know. <laughs> so I uh, uh, no. Yeah. So uh, uh, why? Hmm. This is. I think. Well, this um, uh, people thought it was enough that that the slavery was there uh, as a as a as a subject in the canon, which was already a, a big step, I think, for the Netherlands to uh, or in the Netherlands to say, well, slavery is actually part of Dutch history. Um, so I don't. So that was that was a, actually a big thing in two thousand and six to to say well, slavery is part of the canon of Dutch uh, Dutch history. Um, but going a step further and having someone who is um, uh, explicitly sort of formulating um, uh, opposition, yeah, that was that was something uh, they were not ready for in two thousand and six clearly. Uh, but was uh, is, is is much more accepted now, and it also has to do with with the uh, the, the traumas in in the Netherlands about uh, decolonization and and and, and um, uh, losing the colonial empire um, and and all these people who were willing to um, to no longer be under under Dutch rule, even if that meant that they will. Continue to live in quite a poor country, uh, etc. Um, so there was there was a, a, a trauma in the Netherlands that was not talked about. Um, but the 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 people who were uh, who had an interest in empire, they are no it, there, there no longer is that 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 strong interest in empire. Yeah. So a, a space opens up to talk about it. Um, Although you, you still see that the post-colonial uh, migrants from uh, Indonesia or from the Dutch Indies to the Netherlands are much more opposed to this idea of, for example, making formal apologies about slavery um, than... Uh, oh. So. 
Yeah, thank you. Because I was, can I ask a follow up question as well? Because mm -hmm. uh, um, currently we are closing or close by the elections, and there's this whole motion of, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but eer uh, herstel for Anton de Kom. Right. Um, do you think um, putting him in the canon has raised awareness for these sort of things as well? Yeah, I think I mean, it's it's quite recent. So it's in, in June yeah. the panel was presented. So we don't know really what the long term effect will be. But but for now, it seems that this these are the things that are, are happening. New material is servicing new. Uh, um, uh, and, and because Boutrisse left uh, office, um, uh, uh, the relation with between the Netherlands and Suriname has has um, relaxed a little bit. Um, and it also means that that some of the family tensions are less pronounced now. Um, so yeah, I think I think more um, uh, more is more is possible now than, than was a couple of a uh, couple of years ago. Um, and we'll see where it uh, where it goes. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see also that that it's um, uh, that quality is going to uh, to have an English translation out that will. Uh, uh, help a lot, I think, in, in, in making it part of an international conversation as well. Thank you so much, um, Diverge. Everything clear? Yes? Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, I saw that, um, Matthijs, you had your hand raised and then you took it down. Is there anything you want to ask or did it resolve itself already? Well, basically, I, I didn't want to ask a question, but now, well, I will. Um, <laughs> thank you, uh, Carlan, for your interesting uh, lecture. Um, and I was wondering, um, you see an, an upcoming, uh, uh, in historical studies, an upcoming trend towards like um, seeking uh, differences and comparisons between the, uh, the, between the East and the West inside um, and colonial spheres. Um, and it's always been, uh, at least for uh, at least uh, in high school, uh, the focus was much on Indonesia and that side of the world. And I was wondering how would you how would you make that comparison between those two geograph geographical spheres and uh, specifically on how to compare, for example, Surkarno with Anton de Kom? I was really wondering how you would feel about that. Yeah. Um... Well, I think the, the, the main thing to say first is, is the scale is, is very different. Um, so the economic importance of the Dutch Indies to the Dutch state in the 19th uh, and 20th century is, is very different from, from uh, the situation in, uh, uh, in the, well, what it's called the West Indies, so that that creates then the, the, the scale in that sense. There's also scale in the number of people, um, the millions and millions and millions of people in the Indonesian archipelago, and um, several hundred thousand in in the Dutch uh, Dutch West Indies. So so these in 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 sense of scale, these are these are incomparable, um, and they have um, in 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 the. Um, uh, in the logics of, of empire, in the race science of empire, uh, the understandings of these areas are also very different. So um, the, the Dutch Ministry of the Colonies and the colonial state and the, the entire colonial mindset um, thinks of um, Asia as relating to these uh, uh, local Asian um, elites and hierarchies. They have, they have themselves in part shaped those hierarchies, but that is that is a different uh, um, uh, uh, way of thinking than um, what we see in, in in the West Indies, where it's really about this this ownership of um, uh, uh, people of African descent that is uh, beneficial to them. Uh, you, you can I think it's it's so well illustrated by the side panel of the uh, golden carriage of the royal family. Um, um, uh, they have one side panel that's a painting of the, depicting the um, the colonial empire, um, and it was made 30 years after the end of slavery. But still, you see 
that on the East Indian side, the part that's, that's the allegory for East Indies, you see uh, princes and, and, and royals, um, uh, uh, higher royal figures paying tribute to the, um, um, uh, to the Dutch state, to the representation of the Dutch state, while on the West Indies side, no matter what, <laughs> what it all actually looked like, but in the allegory, it is enslaved people um, uh, on uh, 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 kneeling, bowing, bringing goods, and receiving uh, education. So there is a, a, a much more explicit uh, master-slave relationship in the imagination of, of empire uh, when it comes to the, uh, to the East Indies, I would say. Thank you for this answer. Um, Matthijs, any follow-up? All good? Okay, perfect. Um, we have another question in the chat and uh, I hope I'll say the name right. Um, have you read Karin Ahmad Mukrim's uh, Demand van Veel? And if so, uh, what do you think about the book and its focus on the comms time in a mental asylum? No, I've <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is here. Um, not everything that's behind me is, has been read. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, so I, I'm aware of it, and I don't know. I know I know Karin, and I know her uh, other writings, um, which are absolutely great. Um, but I simply don't. I'm, I'm so sorry to, <laughs> to have to admit this, but uh, no, I don't. Uh, I haven't read it. I'm now very inspired to do it. Yes, that sounds like a. Uh wonderful research project. Um, are there any other questions? Um, if not, we, oh, Robin, go for it, go for it. Yeah, it's maybe less of an intellectual question as the questions uh, asked before, but I was wondering um, how is Anton de Kom remembered in Suriname itself? So it's just, he's just been um taken up in the curriculum in in uh, in holland but how is it in suriname is he part of the curriculum there uh yes yes and 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 as a as a national hero and intellectual and well as i said a part of this is created by the um uh, uh by the uh, uh, state in the 1980s but that it's not really directly associated to him uh, uh, anymore, but he is understood to be sort of uh, a Surinamese a hero uh, and an intellectual, even if, if his activities did not really have a lot of impact on Suriname itself. It is it's someone to be uh, to be uh, proud of, and uh, yeah. So um, and, and and the book is read uh, a lot. So it's uh, yeah. Thank you for another great answer. Um, I think these were all the questions. I don't know if you would like to say anything in closing. Um, of course, we'd like to give you that space. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fair. Um, okay, thank you so much for being here. We know the online sessions and events, they're somewhat um, exhausting for all of us, but we're really happy to see that so many people came in and joined. Um, that we had some fluctuation, I think, um, but this was really insightful. So thank you very, very much. Um, I think what we'll also post in the chat while you are all uh, leaving um, is the website. We have a petition so, um, that you could sign um, for um, showing that we can show the municipality that um, we are not the only ones who are interested in having such a statue in The Hague, having a statue of Anton de Kom in The Hague. And um, yeah, in general, the website as well, where you can see the other things, um, if you can donate or if you want to just uh, see if we plan any other events on this topic or in connection to this project. Um, yeah, and if anyone has any other comments, feel free to just unmute yourself and say something. Um, but we're really excited to have you and I hope you have a wonderful night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think Ethan's doing. Um, sorry, yeah, I'm on the box here. Um, yeah. <laughs>
I, I actually uh, just yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't, Ethan, yeah, you wanted to I just something. wanted to say really quick, I, I don't know how many of you may be aware that I gave a, a public address um, on May 4th, uh, this past uh, May, um, in honor of uh, the 75th anniversary of the um, uh, the end of the war. And um, I it was the speech was centered on the com. And I just wanted to mention that because um, I would I would like to hope that my 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 presentation also might be useful for making this kind of case about the importance of the com. So I just wanted to mention that I, I can I'll put the link in the chat if you're interested. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great uh, great lecture. It was. Uh, um, I'm going to the the family. Uh, I'm going back to the family. So um, uh, many thanks uh, <laughs> everyone and uh, good luck. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Yeah.